Tucked away among Wellington's high-rise buildings is a small community of Jews. Tonight, we look at what life's like growing up Jewish in a Christian land. It's a buzz, a cheap and easy high, but most of all, it's an escape from reality. Tonight, we look at glue sniffing from the sniffer's point of view. Being different isn't easy. Most of us don't choose to stand out from the crowd, at least not all the time. But some young people do make the choice, and when it's based on taking your religious beliefs one step further, there are special problems. Peter finds out how two Orthodox Jewish brothers cope in a predominantly Christian society. Wellington's hardly a place you'd expect to hear the chant of a rabbi. The music radio windy. Yet there are many faces in our New Zealand society that we seldom recognise. And even in our corner of the world, there are Jewish people. Although Israel's the spiritual home of the Jews, they're scattered across the world. On the other side of the globe, New Zealand has had a Jewish community since the 1840s. Always small, today it numbers only 5,000. For a Jew, living in New Zealand means adapting ancient traditions to a modern world. Living a strictly Jewish life has meant some tough compromises for two brothers, Michael and David Sedley. There's a rabbi who taught me for my bar mitzvah, and um, I was reasonably impressed with what he was saying, and you know, he really convinced me to become more religious. Um, yeah, more by his actions than what he was saying. Right. So he says if he has Panasa, if he has another place where he can take a bit, the same mm -hmm. bit he took before. Mm -hmm. For me, well, I'd follow David, really. Um, no, I would have done it anyway. Um, it was more through the youth movement, Benaki, that we belong to, which has a religious ideal, so that they can, so we, can we live lives of you know, religious Jews. Um, so that's where we got our taste of it and learned the rules and learned how, you know, how things are done and saw it. Being Jewish draws these young people together. It's not just a religious unity, it's also political. Okay, that's the egg there. David and Michael's lives are closely bound within Wellington's small Jewish community. They know that living a strictly Jewish life could cut them off from the wider world. I feel most of my social life is more with Jews than with non-Jews. Um, if I want to go to movies, I normally go with a group of Jews as opposed to, you know, non-Jews. Um, you know? No, I, I, feel, know I feel for me, I've got a good mix, reasonably good mix between, I probably do half the things with my Jewish friends and half the things with my non-Jewish friends, depending on what sort of thing it is. Um, yeah, now, less so. What about, say, girlfriends? You know, would you consider going out with a non-Jewish girl? No. No. <laughs> Why not? No, what if there was one that you really liked? It's, um... OK, we're restricted from marrying or getting you know, very firmly attached to a non-Jewish girl. And the easiest way to stop ever considering marrying a non-Jew is, is just not to have that sort of relationship with a non-Jewish girl. At school, Michael's like any other young New Zealander. He's in the fifth form, and only the keeper, the skull cap, suggests he's any different from his classmates. Yes, it is, but it's actually surprising. But even at school, his religion must be respected. Before eating his lunch, Michael has to wash and say a blessing, all according to Jewish religious law. He's found that most of his schoolmates aren't aware of the things that set him apart. One problem I have is that when, when I have my lunch beforehand, I, I wash my hands in a rabbinical way and I can't speak until I've eaten my lunch. Often they run up to me and ask me a question or have you done your homework or something like that and I'm sort of, you know, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, but really surprising little reaction when I first started wearing my kippah, I thought, you know, the whole school would run up to me and ask me questions about it. 
but nothing as listening as we think. After eating comes prayer. Oh, uh, excuse me for a second. Today is Friday, and at sundown, the Jewish Sabbath, the holiest day of the week, begins. Though he enjoys playing soccer at school, Michael won't play in weekend competitions or even go to parties or travel in a car. And so, this is the rationale, if you like, the background of this, an easy one for anyone. For David, to do it. New Zealand literature it's and Jewish religion seem to blend easily at university. But like Michael, all work stops on Friday evening. Then their home becomes a temple of Judaism. The Sabbath begins with a special meal. Although the rest of the family aren't as strict in their religion as David and Michael, they still maintain the traditions. The family eats only kosher food. It must have certain ingredients and be prepared according to the rules of their religion. Sabbath's not just a time for prayer, but for togetherness. Although their parents respect David and Michael's decision to live a strictly Jewish life, their first reaction was cautious. It was a very mixed reaction. I felt they'd taken on a very difficult discipline for themselves, but at the same time we were very proud that they'd taken it on voluntarily. And they were both sincere and committed themselves to it very um, seriously and sensibly, but we were more aware than they were of the burden and the problems that lay ahead, perhaps. And Did you try to talk them out of it at any point? No, no. I really think, uh, I really think that in my heart of hearts I approved. In New Zealand, they're able to live without prejudice or hostility. But outside the home, life for David and Michael means a lot of self-discipline. Because New Zealand isn't run along Jewish lines, they have to miss out on some of the pleasures of Kiwi culture. Music's not a problem, but another part of our way of life, the takeaway bar, is. Hamburgers, fish and chips and pizzas aren't made with kosher ingredients, so David and Michael don't eat them, ever. By going and eating takeaways, it's like throwing everything I've done so far, you know, just throwing it away. And I'd regard it as a waste of two, three years of my life and, you know, just a, you know, hypocritical thing to do. Have you ever eaten takeaways? Do you know what it's like? I know what it's like. Um, in Australia I did, because there's a kosher takeaway over there. And, um, well, two years ago before I turned just religious, I, I did. There's always a temptation to break the Jewish law. And it's probably going to get tougher when they leave home and go out to work. There may even come a time when they have to choose between giving up part of their religion or leaving New Zealand. Good evening, more than 30 United States military aircraft from British bases and aircraft carriers. As Jews, David and Michael have another home. Israel is the center of the Jewish world, and many young Jews go there to live and occasionally to fight. Now it's a very important place, uh, important, for example, if there's another Holocaust or something, there's a place where the Jews can go. Forty years ago they were being kicked out of Israel, they, had, you know, they couldn't get out of Germany. Um, now, if something like that happened, they could have somewhere to go, and so I think it's important to, in that aspect. How do you think you'd react if there was another war in the Middle East and one or other of them wanted to go and fight there? Um, I think it would... I think I would approve. I think, by and large, I think... I think... Uh, I would, I consider that they, they are doing, doing the right thing. How would you feel on that, Judy? Um, 
worried and anxious, but I think that it's very easy when there's a dramatic situation to get carried away by the seriousness of the moment. And I think in the 67 war, Stephen and I both felt, had we had the chance, we would have wanted to be involved and to have helped. And I would understand it if the children, if the boys were old enough and were able to be of help, that they would feel they should stand by Israel. As loyal as one is to New Zealand, one also has a very strong sense of the importance of maintaining Israel at whatever cost. Being citizens of two countries might be confusing, but Michael's confident he's brought the two worlds together. Generally, being a New Zealander, it doesn't conflict with being Jewish. Uh, in New Zealand, the law says we've got freedom of religious practice, so I've got no, you know, very few problems. Maybe getting a job would be difficult because certain days I have to take off and I can't work late on Fridays, etc., but generally not too bad. Each morning, Michael's bedroom becomes a place of prayer. The prayer shawl and armband symbolise his feeling for an ancient belief. So you can't really describe it in words, but it's a feeling that, you know, this is your roots, this is your um, heritage, this is your life, you know, and it gives life a whole new meaning. New Zealander and Jew. Michael's sure he can be both and in doing so, add something special to our society.